hello everyone you're welcome back to my channel this is the simple style we'll be making in this video with just two yards of fabrics let's get started for this tutorial i'll be using two yards of fabrics matching thread measuring tape short ruler then fixers pins chalk and long ruler after folding my fabrics into two, I will start by imputing the length of my trouser because we are starting with the trouser first, palazzo trouser. So the length of my trouser plus two inches seam allowance. After then, I will determine my waist to hip measurement, which is eight inches. I will add three inches to it to determine my crotch and i'm going to just mark a straight line that's basically what i'm doing the, the crotch is where i'm going to impute my lap or your tie measurement that is what i'm doing here and the hip line after then i'm going to divide my waist measurement into four and add two inches to it for same allowance into two first then into four my waist measurement is 30 divided by 4, 7.5. I'm marking 7.5 first and adding 2 inches seam allowance to it. Coming to my hip line, I'm imputing my hip measurement. It is 40 divided by 4. That is 10 inches plus 2 inches as well for seam allowance. That is 12 inches. Then my lap measurement divided by 2 plus just 1 inch. I'll be adding just 1 inch to this one. My lap measurement plus divided by 2 plus 1 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to draw a straight line to help me draw the curve. Then I'll be connecting my waist plus hip to the tie. That is what I'm doing here. The waist to the hip, then where the time measurement stop. You can just use your curve ruler if you have it. If you don't, just use your hand to just sketch it out. Now I am going to the length of my trouser, determine how wide I want my palazzo to be. After then, I'm going to be adding two inches seam allowance to it as well. Now I'll be connecting my tie to the palazzo, the wideness of the palazzo connecting to where the tie measurement stop. That's what I'm doing here. Sorry, I don't know this part is not visible. I'm sorry about that. Then I'm going to cut. After cutting it out, I am going to place these on another fabric, fold it into two and cut the same out. I've done that here. I've placed the, the first part on, this, on another fabric, then cut it out. I'm just going to take one of these pieces and um, take one inch downward. Just take any piece and do this, then connect it with the side yeah connect it with the side where the seam the side seam is going to be just connected a slanted line and cut it out you can come down as much as two inches three inches but i'll be making it just one inch because this is going to be the front the back is always higher than the front that is why we're coming down by one inch then open the side you know we cut it on fold so you need to open it after opening it you're going to take the two pieces for the back and pin it together 
you are going to do the same for the front piece as well that is the back and now i am placing after pinning it together i'm placing it on top of each other so you will see what it looks like before i take it to the same machine We're going to stitch the front couch line and the back as well you're going to stitch it for the pocket i'm going to first come down by one and a half inches then i'm coming down by seven inches i'm going to do this all around for all the sides of the trousers first come down by one and a half inches that is where i'm going to start seeing the pocket from the length of the pocket is seven inches i'm going to do this for all the sides of the trousers now i am going to determine the length of my waistband by measuring my trouser all round whatever i get here is what i'll be using for my band plus two inches The wideness of the band I cut out is 5 inches and this is the band, elastic band I'll be using. I'm just going to put it inside, then stitch and attach it to my trouser. That is the top stitch, then attach it to my trouser. The elastic band I'm using is 2 inches lesser than my actual waist measurement. Now I'm going to take it to the same machine and stitch. For the top, I will start by determining the length plus 2 inches same allowance. Note that my fabric is folded into 4. After that, I will determine my bust point which is 10 inches and my waist which is 16 inches. But I will not be needing the waist measurement, just marking it out. After then, I will mark out my neck measurement, which is 4 inches wideness, and the depth is going to be 3 inches. I'm going to connect it together. So it's 3 by 4. The depth is 3 inches, and the up, that wideness is 4 inches. After then, I will determine my bust measurement plus 2 inches seam allowance. And as well, go to the end of the top, determine how wide I want it, plus 2 inches seam allowance. The, no, the 2 inches is not just for seam allowance, it's also for ease, to make the top really free. After then, I'll connect the markings together. I'll be needing this line. That was why I did that first. Now, I am going to come down by one and a half inches for shoulder slope because i'll be using the entire length of the fabric i'm cutting the sleeves and the body together then i'm going to connect that point that one and a half inch to the neck point to the neck measurement From that one and a half inch, I'll come down by nine inches. Eight inches is how wide I want my sleeves, and one inch is for the seam allowance. So, total nine inches. I'm going to connect the sleeve with the body's line. That line I, I, I connected earlier, I'm going to connect it with my sleeve and cut it out. I already mentioned that I am cutting both the front and the back piece together and I'll be cutting my sleeves together with the bodies. That is why I'm using the entire length of this fabric because I'm cutting the sleeves together with the bodies. This is me cutting everything out to have the front piece and the back piece separately.
after cutting it out this is how it's looking both the front and the back I am just going to fold in the neck and top stitch or you can use your bias tape and also connect the shoulders together fold in your sleeves and stitch or you can use a bias tape close all the openings and the damp part as well hem it i'll be using six inches for my side slit now i'll be taking out one of the pieces i will use one for front and one for the back the one for the back i'll be putting buttons So I'm just going to measure 4 inches downward from the center and open it. Turn it with my bias tape and fix my button there. Now I will take it to the same machine and see. I already fixed the pocket the seven inches and the wideness or the length of the pockets is just 12 inches so seven inches by 12 inches i just attach it then top stitch that is what i did for all the four sides of the trousers so i'm going to just fix everything together make sure it's well aligned then take it to the same machine and stitch all around when I get to the damp part of the trouser, I'm just going to fold it in. The allowance I added, fold it in and top stitch. That's what I'll be doing for the two sides. Those are the places I'll be stitching. I will be stitching this place as well. I'm going to close it up. After stitching, I'm just going to attach my band, and that is all for the trouser. After attaching the front and the back piece of the top together, this is what we are having. This is the arm. I want you guys to see it before I complete the whole thing. I'm showing you step by step. That's the slit, the damper. That's the damp part. I fix it as well. The slit is just six inches, as I mentioned earlier. What we mean is the neck. I'm going to complete the neck and as well the button hole. I'm going to turn it in out with my bias, then put my button and close the neck. That is what we mean and I'll be giving it a good place. I will see you guys in the next video which is going to be the end of this video. Thank you.